As I've been working on my Jane Austen Rabbit playset, I've asked a few friends for some ideas on how to make a grand Jane Austen estate look as if it was inhabited by a family of bunnies. I think that my favorite suggestion so far is that, naturally, if there was a large estate home owned by a family of rabbits, it would have to be filled with tons of adorable baby bunnies. And really, how could I say no to that? So here we go, a quick and easy baby bunny pattern. From the very beginning, I knew that I wanted this pattern to be able to do a bit of double duty. Obviously, I wanted to use it for my Jane Austen playset, but I also wanted it to be about the right size to fit inside a plastic Easter egg so that people could make this little bunny and use it as a gift in the springtime. So I started with the dimensions that I wanted and I actually played with quite a few different shapes. What I did know starting out is that I wanted to design it to be made out of wool felt. I have this fantastic pile of old sweaters that have worn out and gotten holes in them and that I felted by simply shrinking in my washer and dryer. Um, the same way that you might have accidentally done several times with a nice sweater, but I do this on purpose with my sweaters when I'm done wearing them. I love the freedom that you get with the fact that you can have a raw edge with wool felt and nothing frays. Obviously, you can use any kind of felt for this project, and obviously you don't need to make your felt out of an old sweater, but if you do have an old sweater lying around that you need a good use for, this is a great way to repurpose it. To make your own baby bunny, you can go to sweetbriarsisters.com to download your free pattern and to find a list of necessary materials. You'll begin by cutting out your pieces as described on the pattern piece. And then you can go ahead and trace the ear placement and eye and nose placement on the front of one of your body pieces. Go ahead and fold one of your ears in half and place it inside the ear placement guide and sew in place. You'll repeat that process with the second ear and sew it in place. Now you have both your ears sewn in place. You can match like sides together in your body pieces and sew around your bunny, leaving an opening so that you can turn and stuff it. I'm using a quarter inch inseam. I'm going ahead and clipping the curves. It looks like I'm clipping past my sew line, but I'm, it's just that my scissors are sharper uh, towards the back. And once you've trimmed those corners, you can turn your bunny right side out. I like to use my hemostats for this part, though it's not necessary to have them. It just makes it a little bit easier to turn um, this little piece. And then I like to use my chopstick to make sure that all of the nice little curves poke out just the way that they're supposed to before you stuff it. Once my bunny is all stuffed, I'll take a needle and two strands of embroidery floss. Once my embroidery floss has a knot at the end, I can go in through the opening at the bottom and bring it up at the line where I traced the eye to be. I'm using a satin stitch to sew on the eyes and I'll use two little tiny straight stitches for the nose. When it's time to tie off, I like to bring my thread all the way to the bottom and tie it onto the part that I'm going to turn into the bunny. That way my knot will be hidden. Now I can turn those raw edges in and sew this hole closed with a ladder stitch. And once this opening is closed, you can just knot your thread and you are done. If you like this video and you want to see some more free sewing tutorials, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel.